If you want just one bit of advice about headshots, it would be keep it simple, keep it consistent. That's two bits of advice, but that's the idea behind this video. Headshots using just one flash. Hello, I'm Gavin Hoey and you're watching Adorama TV. Brought to you by Adorama, the camera store that's got everything for us photographers. And in this video, we're gonna be doing some headshots. Although I'm gonna be using one flash, I am gonna show you three different techniques. And it's techniques that you really need to know because when you're working with somebody who isn't used to being in front of a camera, being confident and consistent in what you do is really good advice. Actually now that's three bits of advice, but plenty to be getting on with. So whilst I'm getting things ready, you should be clicking on the subscribe button and the bell icon so you never miss a video right here on Adorama TV. Let's get a light set. Actually, this is it. It's just going to be this one. Let's get a model in. Let's get shooting. To help me out today, I've got the amazing Sophie. Sophie is going to be the model for this photo session, except it's not really a modeling session today. Let's talk about the outfits. I've got three different lighting ideas in mind. And for a really good headshot session, you want to have a selection of outfits because that will give you variety to your pictures. So we've got at least three different looks we can choose from for Sophie as we go through. But the important thing is you really only have to style your subject from the waist up, which can make life a little bit easier. Let's talk about the camera and particularly the lens because I'm gonna use a slightly longer lens than I would normally. That means I'm gonna back up slightly and backing up gives me a little bit of compression and that just helps the facial features look a little bit more natural. I'm also on a tripod and this is really important because normally I would have a camera and a lens in front of my face, but that doesn't help with communication. Putting your camera on a tripod means you can frame it up and then you can keep the communication going, which for people that aren't experienced at having their picture taken can really make a big difference. Okay, so that's the basic setup. Let's get our light in, take a few photos. I'm gonna be using the Flashpoint Explore 300 as my light for this setup, but more importantly is the softbox. This is a large 44 inch Parasnap softbox, and I'm using quite a large softbox for this small home studio because it's gonna give me the softest light. And by and large, what we're trying to do with headshots is create soft lighting. If your style is really hard, edgy, contrasty lighting, this probably isn't the look for you. I've also asked Sophie just to lean against the wall and that really helps somebody who's not used to posing because just leaning against the wall is a natural thing to do. It automatically poses you slightly. But let's take a photo like this, see how it looks. Here we go, Sophie. Spoiler alert, this is gonna be a bad photo. So this has a few issues. First of all, it's way too tight. These are not passport photos, these are headshots. And although the name suggests you wanna go in close, what you actually want to do is have plenty of room above and below your subject. And that just gives you room to crop into, but also room for your subject to move a little bit. And then there is the position of the light. Having it here is not a great position because it's a quite a long distance from Sophie. And that means that the light that reaches her is a little bit shadowy. And if you look close at the picture, you'll notice that the highlights are quite specular or shiny. So I'm gonna position the light fairly close to Sophie. So it's just out of my frame and I can see on my viewfinder that, yep, I'm not in the shot. And I'm also making sure that the back edge of my light is lined up with Sophie. So there's lots of light in front of Sophie to make sure I get plenty of soft light reaching her face. And I could use TTL, but for consistency, I like to use manual flash. So Sophie, I'm just gonna pop this near your chin and I'm gonna get my flash to read F5.6, exactly the same as my camera. And then I know I'm gonna get consistent pictures shot after shot. And there's one more thing I'm going to do to make sure that that stays consistent all the way through and that is to set a custom white balance. Now, I could just do a general white balance in my camera, but if these are really important pictures, you might wanna do a full white balance using something like the Color Checker Passport. Okay, let's just take a test photo like this, see how it looks. You can see that the corner of the room is now visible. The skin doesn't have those really strange, sparkly hotspots that we had with the distant flash from before. And that's basically all there is for this one light setup. So Sophie, if you're ready, let's take a few photos like this. Okay, here we go, Sophie. I'm just gonna frame myself up a little bit. Great stuff. Okay, yeah. Now, here's the tricky bit. You've got to not be a model. <laughs> Hi, 
With a tripod, you might find you end up just taking pictures in one spot, but remember, you can move around. But way more importantly, turn your camera on its side. You need to take both landscape and vertical portrait format shots. Your subject is gonna need both of those. So I've changed a few things around for the second lighting position. And the first thing you're gonna notice is, well, I've put these big black curtains here because the light is now above Sophie. We've gone with a sort of a beauty light setup and this white wall is gonna act like a reflector. It's just gonna bounce light in. So I put a bit of black fabric up to try and absorb that bounce. I've gone with a gray background just to mix that up a little bit. But what about the position of this beauty light? Well, if I was doing something creative and arty, I might put it here but there's a few things we need to fix here, starting with the position of the light. Right, so I've moved the light back. So once again, the back edge of our softbox is roughly in line with the front of Sophie's face, which means most of the light is in front of Sophie like this. It's also about as high as I can get it in my small home studio. The higher you can get your light, then the more even the illumination will be on your subject. And remember, with headshots, what I'm trying to achieve is flattering light rather than dramatic light. It shouldn't change the exposure because the distance is still basically the same. And now we have much better light on Sophie. The background goes slightly darker because the flash has moved a little bit further away from it, but we're getting closer. Now we need to deal with the shadow underneath Sophie's chin. And I'm gonna use a reflector. It's a passive fill light. Remember, this is a one light headshot. It's gonna bounce light in, fill in the shadows. I could use the white side. In fact, I would normally use the white side. But for this look, I've put the reflector further away than I would normally put it, so it's not gonna get in the way of the waist up pictures I'm after. And also, I'm after a slightly stronger effect than I would personally normally prefer. But it exactly fits the brief of what I'm after. This isn't a tutorial about how to pose, but as some quick guidelines, hands, what do you do with hands? So actually getting your subject to use their hands isn't a bad idea. And one way you can do that, if they're sat down, is ask them to cross their legs. You'd like to cross your legs for me, Sophie. And then they can rest their elbow on their knee or their thigh. Just watch out for the fingers. If you're gonna do this, fingers of a clenched fist aren't necessarily the most relaxed way to have them. Sophie knows all this. She's doing this on purpose to help us out. Another option for your headshots is if your subject has a vocation, maybe bring some of that vocation into some of the headshots. So Sophie is not just a great model, she is a magical makeup artist. So we've raided her makeup bag and we've grabbed a few bits and we can bring those in as well. So, well, let's take a few photos like that. For focus, I'm totally relying on the camera's face and eye detect to make sure these pictures stay sharp. And that's not me being lazy. That is really important because the more I can ignore the camera, the more I can interact with my subject. For my third setup, you'll notice I've changed from flash to this. This is continuous light. And although flash is my favorite choice for portraits, there's a really good argument for using continuous light with headshots. So I've switched to the Nanlite FS200. It's a 200 watt continuous light, and it's exactly the same light modifier as I had before, the 44 inch Parasnap. Now I'm gonna turn the light up to its maximum brightness. Sophie, it's gonna get quite bright underneath there. And it's worth just warning your model about this and ramping up the brightness, don't suddenly turn it on because it can be quite a shock to the system, especially when you have it as close to Sophie as I've got here. To fill in the shadows on the other side, I'm gonna use the reflector again. But one of the big advantages of continuous light is what you see is literally what you get. So I can see the reflector doing its job straight away and I can look in my viewfinder and make sure that I don't get it in the frame. There we go. 
So the first advantage of having a really bright continuous light is that your subject's pupils will start to shrink down, which means you get more iris, more color in their eyes, and if they've got great eyes like Sophie has, that is a real winner. And the more eagle-eyed amongst you will notice that Sophie has reversed what she had earlier. So now she has sat on the small grey stool and has the smaller stool below her. And this is on purpose because, Sophie, if you want to just put your feet on that stool, she can now use this to lean in. And because I'm shooting at a really wide open aperture, f1.4, I'm going to emphasize the depth of field effect by increasing the distance between Sophie's eyes, where I'm focusing, and, well, everything else behind her. And that just elevates our photos into something that looks just that little bit more professional. Okay, Sophie, are you ready? Let's do some more headshots like this. Here we go. The most important thing you can bring to any headshot session, you just can't buy at Adorama, and that is the ability to make your subject relax. Now, you don't have to be a stand-up comedian, but if it means telling jokes or just chatting to them like normal people, whatever you need to do, the more they relax, the better your pictures are going to be. Now you could say photographing Sophie made this whole thing a lot easier and it does help to have somebody who is confident in front of the camera in front of your camera. In fact, if you really want to test yourself as a headshot photographer, why not photograph your own headshot? Yeah, that's definitely something for another video. Now, if you've enjoyed this video or you've got any questions, just leave me a comment down below. Click on the bell icon and you'll never miss a video right here on Adorama TV and we have new content, well, pretty much all the time. And of course, if you haven't already done so, click on that subscribe button. If you have clicked on it, don't click on it again, just once is enough. I'm Gavin Howie, thanks for watching.